Okay, you guys, looks like you couldn't hear my mic. Sorry about that. Um, I was saying, we're welcome to the the chat here, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about Eugene Field here today, as long along with the Rebidu Row, uh, what we're doing here for the uh, the end of the situation being closed. Uh, we do have a plan that we're putting together right now. Um, we are currently still closed to the public, um, but we are ho looking at some dates to open up, and we're hoping to open up soon, uh, so people can come see all the great exhibits that we have and look at some of the stuff we have going on here. Um, along with that, though, we are going to keep doing these Facebook Lives each week. So like I said, every other week, let me know some people you're interested in. We have a small list that we've come up with. But if you have some of your own, we'd definitely love to know who some of those are and, and what you're interested in learning about here at St. Joe. Um, so today we're going to talk about Eugene Field. Um, he's a fascinating person. A lot of you probably know about the street named after his poem, but may not know the history behind the man who wrote the poem. Uh, so we're going to talk about, like I said, Eugene Field today. Uh, Eugene Field was born in St. Louis. Um, he actually was born in 1856. Uh, or not sorry, not 1856. He was born in 1850. Um, and an interesting fact about his father was his father was actually the attorney who represented Dred Scott in the Dred Scott versus Sanford case, which can sometimes be referred to as the lawsuit that started the Civil War. Uh, so he... Uh, came from a family that obviously was kind of known to people. Um, and he ended up going to college at first in Williamsburg or Williamston, Massachusetts. Uh, but when his father died, when he turned 19, he decided to transfer back uh, to this area. Um, went to Knox College for a while in Galesburg. And then eventually ended up at the University of Missouri in Columbia. Um, he, went, he apparently, from what we've read, wasn't a very serious student. Um, enjoyed playing practical jokes. Um, and he even led raids on the president's wine cellar, which just seems like something that people wouldn't do today. Uh, so he finished his degree there, um, ended up trying to study or go year to Europe for a while, ended up returning six months later completely penniless, wasn't sure where he was going to turn, so he ended up becoming a journalist for the St. Joe Gazette here in St. Joseph uh, in 1861. And he was very popular with the people in St. Joseph. Uh, he would write light and humorous articles, sometimes gossipy even to a way, but they were commonly reprinted around the country. Um, and he was very much loved in the area, ended up becoming the actual city editor uh, before he ended up moving on. And during his time here in St. Joseph, he did meet his wife, uh, who was his wife his entire life, of Julie Comstock. Uh, the story of their relationship is interesting. She was actually his college roommate's younger sister, and he met her when he was 14. And uh, he apparently fell in love with her then, asked her father to allow him to marry her daughter. His father, her father was known as saying that that's not a possible, she's only 14, to which Eugene Field responded, what of it? She will outgrow that. Uh, they ended up getting married two years later in the uh, Christ Pixel Church, which is still downtown today. Um, and then at the wedding reception at their home at Fifth, uh, at the Comstock home at Fifth and Mississippi, um, including apparently up to 34 wedding cakes that were used at that wedding. Which is a little overkill, but you know. Uh, after that, again, he was working at the Gazette, and their son was born um, and unfortunately died. Um, throughout their whole lives, he and his wife just had eight children five of which who lived to uh, full growth or full age. Um, and so he lived here for a while and then moved around to different magazine or newspapers over the years. Um, he worked in St. Louis for a while for the Morning Journal, along with the Kansas City Times and the Denver Tribune. Um, during his time in Denver, he his house is actually on the National Register of Places in Denver. Uh, and then a number of other places over the years. And then in around 1890, his health started to fail. Uh, so his wife and him moved to England to, I guess, get healthy. I'm not sure why you moved to London for health, but that's where they moved. Um, and their children in a school in Germany during the time. And that is where he wrote Lover's Lane. Um, he was actually extremely sick. And he was fondly remembering the city of St. Joseph and his love that he found for his wife. Uh, so he wrote the poem that's known as Lover's Lane, uh, which is up on the screen now. Uh, Lover's Lane was written 
completely about St. Joseph. It's hard to read here on the screen because the picture we have is not the best. It basically talks about how St. Joseph was leagues away from him at the time, and then he was in the gloom of a rented room, and in the London fog, it's all around him, but he misses riding in a carriage with the love of his life, and he's away from himself, from all his love. Uh, the, the poem itself even took a life of its own. Published, and the city of St. Joseph latched onto it immediately. Uh, the citizens actually chose to rename the lower portion of Rochester Road Lover's Lane, which is why we have Lover's Lane today. Um, they absolutely love the idea of a street in, out, out in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely being in love. Uh, after a few years, uh, when postcards became a thing, there was actually a series of postcards that have been put out, which I'm sure some of you have seen around town. It's a series of 12 postcards that works its way through the different stanzas of the poem each with a picture of Eugene Field and a part of Lover's Lane shown on it. Um, this is just an example of one of them, but there's a series of them that are out there that you can actually find and see. I mean, we do have a few here at the row. Like for the poem to get out on its own. Um, in 1895, Field did die in uh, Chicago, but his legacy lived on. Um, he does have a, a star on the Walk of Fame in St. Louis. Um, and then... There is elementary schools all over the country named after Eugene Field, um, including obviously in St. Joseph with Field Elementary. Uh, but even as far west as Pasadena, California, and uh, places like Chicago all have elementary schools. And then there's also uh, additional schools in Albuquerque. Uh, one of the branches of the Denver Public Library is named after him, as well as an entire residential area or dormitory of the University of Massachusetts Amherst is called Field Hall. So he was kind of this, he became larger than life uh, with his story and the poems that he wrote. And many of his other poems went on to be used as parts in other locations. Um, one of his, his more, there's a memorial called The Dream Lady that has a poem called The Rockabye, Rockabye Lady that is at Lincoln Park in Chicago. Um, and then there was also a number of his pictures that were added to paintings by Maxwell Parrish that were produced. Um, and then his home is now actually a museum in St. Louis. It's actually one of the children's museums in St. Louis. And so he kind of transcended just what St. Joseph was, but his mark was left on St. Joseph itself by having Lover's Lane exist and be part of his legacy. And so that's the story of Eugene Field. Uh, he was kind of here for a short time, but then yet still left that huge impact on St. Joe. And that left a huge impact on him because had he not come to St. Joseph, he never would have met his wife, uh, Julia Comstock. And so that's kind of the story of our, our gentleman today. Uh, if you're looking forward to anyone else, please do let me know. Uh, we'd love to talk about a few other people here on the, uh, the, uh, the show. And then we'll uh, look into some other stories we're looking into doing as well. Um, like I said, the row is still currently closed. Uh, but we are looking forward to opening up for everyone and having everyone enjoy the museum. So uh, we look forward to talking to everyone. And thanks so much for joining us today. And we do look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.